Good morning, everybody, and welcome to PrepperCon Radio. We've got a fun day in store for you. We're going to be talking money, 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 money. Real money, real, not fake real money. Real money. That's We're right. We're going to be talking money, but I want to give a special shout-out to our show sponsor, Survival Medical. Uh, they're actually sponsoring our show, and they are one of the coolest and best. I mean, they're, they're throwing the entire medical world on their ear. They're, they're game-changing some things. They've actually come up with a process to actually make your medical supplies last 20 years. So normally your Band-Aids, your Band-Aids go bad, your alcohol pads go bad, everything goes bad, you know, within a year to two years. A couple of years, yeah. Especially you know, if it's sitting in your car. Yeah, well, like especially mine. if it's sitting in your car, the back window of your car. <laughs> I don't know how many cars I've seen in Utah where they've got a little red, red first aid symbol or a white first aid symbol on a red box in the back window. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to last out. very long. So... Yeah, they are. You can check them out, survival-medical.com. Or if you want to hang out with them this weekend, they're going to be in town. I love these guys. Check them out. They've got everything from backpacking needs to your big bucket that has everything in it. So when the crap does hit the fan, your family's prepared. Put it next to your food storage. You'll all, it'll always be there. So check them out, survival-medical.com. They are sponsoring the show today. You're going to hear a lot about them. Um, but we've got a fun show going on today. Shane, what do we got going on? Well, today we have a kind of corny, very special guest here. One of our... <laughs> <laughs> These guys have been bantering for the last 20 <laughs> minutes before the show. It's awesome. Yes, and, and I know if you if you listen to our show at all uh, that I love silver. And I know Scott does too. And so today our guest is Kelly Finnegan of Quality Silver Bullion down at Orem. And you guys try and be... Uh, try and stay I guess a little bit unnoticed you you don't necessarily do a lot of business out of your location you're more of a mint is that correct we are a mint uh, I tell people uh, you could drive by us 20 times and not know we're there and oh we and I've, I've done it 200 times so. yeah and we've had people come by and think hey this is actually uh, this is a wood star and it's like no <laughs> we do metal manufacturing <laughs> so nice uh, yeah and I'm definitely going to come down. And, and that's see a you security guys. thing. So you Absolutely. know, and that's the thing important about this is don't tell people what you have. Yeah, guys, if you want to know where they're located, go to Canab. <laughs> <laughs> it's right off the main street in Canab. W- big building full of gold and silver. If you want to know where they're located, Scrooge, swimming through it every once in a while. Go to qualitysilverbullion.com. Right. Right, and we'll tell you. You know, it's on a need to know basis. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> we like need to know. So we're talking about the, mon- the money system, about why people should be getting into gold and silver. Precious metals are great. You know, I've got a lot of silver. I've got a little bit of gold, just mm-hmm. a tiny smidge. Um, and then I've got my jewelry, which really right. doesn't do anything for me. You're not going to get fake. rid of that well, anyway. Well, that's how the Indians, th- in uh, India actually has more gold yep. and silver than the United States and Europe combined. Because wow. it's a tradition. They carry their wealth yeah. around their necks. Very smart They people. don't trust government. They yeah. don't trust Fake money. Currency. I, I understand that one. So how did you get into this business, Kelly? Well, I started collecting. My dad brought home a silver dollar uh, from work. A, a guy had 500 He wanted to sell for a dollar a piece. And my dad said, well, I don't want 500 of them, but I'll take three for my kids. And I got to pick one. And uh, that was in, like, 1969. So I'm an older guy. And I still have that dollar. It's my first dollar. Really? Just got me excited about how neat these old coins were and that people actually used things like that. And why did they use that rather than what we have? And so. Yeah, and that's exactly where I started as well. My dad, for Christmas, he gave us a proof, you know, a American, proof American Eagle. Oh, Proof Eagle. Mm-hmm. Proof Eagle, and which, of course, I still have it and I will always have it, mm-hmm. even if it, you know, silver truly goes to its true value. <laughs> so I started collecting pennies when I was 12. And I've got a penny for every year I've been alive since wow, 1977. Cool. So a few of them actually have copper in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty impressive. <laughs> Nothing like what you guys have got. That's one thing we, I do is... Uh, we is couldn't is afford any nice... So Rand Paul said, now we're on the zinc standard. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So I've, I've I'm, you know, I'm newer, and there, a lot of our listeners are probably newer to precious metals. Um, it is definitely... It's, it's interesting how it all works. You know, we the United States used to be on a gold-backed system. Now they're on a debt-backed system. All the dollar bills, all the twenties, the hundreds. If you've got, if you're fortunate enough to have those, you know, in your wallet, and the the digits in your bank are really just digits in the bank. That's right. And there's it's just, nothing. It's just a promise that the government's going to tax somebody <laughs> <Yeah>. to make <laughs> good on that. Because all a, all <laughs> a bill true. is is it's it's not even 
uh, money anymore. It's it's a debt back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There's nothing backing it but debt. It's called fiat, and that mm-hmm. just means let it be or so be it. And it's because the government says this is money. Yeah. Take and us at our word. It Trust us. That. This is this is uh, we can use this mm-hmm. for exchange. Mm-hmm. That scares the crap out of me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the reason I really wanted to have Kelly in today is, is well, first I wanted to learn a little bit more about what you guys do in your minting, the, the products you have available, because I know you sell to other dealers as well. Yes, we mainly But also, do that. I wanted to talk about, as we go along in the, in the program today, I want to talk about really what's happening in the world right now with precious metals. If you really got your have your eye on the market, on, on what's going on, it's kind of crazy, really, what's happening out there. So let's we'll get to that a little bit later. But I wanted to, I guess, really see what what do you guys do? Do you actually smelt? Do you? I mean, I know you you do blanks. Well, we don't smelt, but we do buy from um, a London recognized bullion depositories. Mm-hmm. Uh, we take either the shot or bars, okay. cut them up, and we actually. So you have the Dory pour, ball bars. Well, correct? not Dory because no. Dory aren't pure enough. Okay, these are, okay. These are at least three or four nines pure. Okay. Uh, we melt those. We actually pour the strip, roll them. Punch the blanks, anneal. Okay, because there aren't many that actually do blanks, right? Right, you're right. A lot of even the U.S. Mint now buys their buys blanks, blanks. pre made Right. So we do the whole process, and and we're a mint, and we actually are a mint. You know, there's so many places that call themselves, right. you know, the national mint that sells stuff. In and then they have you papers. make their coins. Yeah, and we do a lot of that custom okay. minting for people. We are IRA approved. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And, cool. and one of the neat things that we do, but it's a pain in the butt. Is we guarantee that every round that we strike, mm-hmm. we weigh it. Okay. And it's going to be, you know, if it's one ounce, it's going to be one ounce, 1.000 ounces wow. or heavier. Mm-hmm. So it's nice. not an average like a lot of places. And do. you don't want it heavier. Well, we don't, <laughs> but it, it's better to have it a little bit heavier right, than a light. Little, a little light. Um, yeah. So, you know, that was how it was written, and, and it's. It costs us some extra money, but boy, mm-hmm. when you have a, a loyal following, they want our stuff. And now, we and the other thing is when we buy our we buy our product back. There's a lot of places that'll sell, but they won't mm-hmm. buy it back. Okay, or they have such a high minimum. People have bought from other places, and it's like, well, they won't buy it back from me because it's under a thousand dollars. And we'll buy it back. And our product, we actually pay a lot more for it coming back because we know how good it is, and we don't have a problem reselling it. Right. Now, now if I came in and said, hey, I'd like a thousand one ounce pieces, you know, with my picture on it. Will you do that? We can do that for you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yes. So I can have my own Scotland currency. Yes. You Not can. Scotland, the country, Scotland, Scotland. Scotland. my dream world. <laughs> right. As long That's as it awesome. doesn't say one dollar on it. I'll right. Do right. It. You can't put a, you a can currency. Say one dollar. One dollar. You know, whatever. I can make up words. Right. You can make up words. Yes. One monetary unit. We'll just call it that. Mm-hmm. One monetary one MU. unit. One MU. Yeah. One, one Amero. <laughs> hey, don't be going that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So if you guys are thinking about making your own um, monetary system for your own household, yeah, this, this is, is right where to do it. Even commemorative things for commemorative. a high school reunion or a family oh, cool. reunion. We've done a lot of That's that. That's kind of crazy. Too, so. So I didn't even know that was possible. I, was, I thought you had to have like some government approved you know, to make your own. You just have to have stuff. money. That's right. <laughs> money talks. Apparently, you just have to have those those digits or those those electrons right. and electrons in the, in that are, g- are good for now. Mm-hmm. For now, we'll get into that. So what's going on? Well, Shane looks like oh, he's chomping gonna, a bit. I'm he's over gonna, there bouncing <laughs> around like yes, I'm a little like hyper little today. Kid on Christmas. Seriously, when, uh, when we have two topics <laughs> going on in the building that Shane freaks out about two number only one, two. This is when <laughs> Shane freaks out when we're talking about gold and silver. He he's he's like kid in a candy store, Christmas kid, you know what? All and that the second stuff. one, he's just like ho ho ho, yay yay, and he's and he hunches over the mic and he leans in and, and he's I'm just close like, here. He's like hugging the mic like it's his be- his new girlfriend or something. He gets so excited, and then the other one is when we're talking guns. Yep, and and that's when we get our buddy Jeff in here, who's <laughs> probably the biggest best gun aficionado we've ever known um, from Ready Man, and he just he's he's. It looks like a girl on at prom. She's just so excited. She's got a pretty dress on. Shane gets so excited. Those are his two <laughs> favorite topics. And so for me, this is fun because then Scott I get to mess is, with him. He's not wrong. I know. <laughs> so, okay. So talking, let's talk economy. Let's talk. I kind of want to shift gears. Unless, if yeah. Well, my, I guess my other questions were, okay, what products that do you make that we would recognize out there at other other bullion well, dealers we, or we, we make a lot of one ounce rounds for some major companies. I mean, we make. 
10 ounce silver bars. We make one tenth ounce rounds. Mm-hmm. And we actually did want to do a quick plug here that we of will course, at, absolutely at, go at for qualitysilverbullion.com. Uh, we're going to do a special on our one tenth ounce rounds. Um, Jim, who is mm-hmm. one of the owners, he says, okay, Kelly, whatever you want to do. So cool. it's through Saturday. And it's a code word. If you go onto our website, it's 5% off, which for us, that's a lot. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> that's really the, big. The margin in bullion is. There the is credit card companies make more money than us. You're but, hoping for volume. Right. But uh, on the 10th ounce blanks, rounds, which are great for a barter thing, uh, 5% off, and the code word is be prepared. Sweet. One there word, lowercase, be prepared. Awesome. Now, now um, let's talk about that for a second real quick. Is You know, there's people that who love junk silver, mm-hmm. and I'm not one of them. I love, and I do have some of the 10th ounce, And junk ounce, silver is the 90% ounce. silver exactly. that the government did before 64 exactly. and earlier. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Essentially, yeah. It's uh, not junk. It's really valuable. Exactly. <laughs> it is. And, and I guess it was previously called junk because nobody really wanted it. Yeah, it's worn. It's not Exactly. But it's in such high demand right now. It's can, it, I, I think it's become more available recently. But there was a time here in the past couple months where you really couldn't almost even get it. It ebbs and flows. It, it goes up and down. Sometimes you can get it, sometimes you can't. It just and I think some of us preppers really think, okay, that's going to be a great uh, way to barter because you've got all these different uh, sizes of you know 90% silver that you can barter with because it's 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 still silver. It has has real value, unlike uh, you know unlike you know the coins that we have nowadays, which actually cost more to make than what they're worth. Mm-hmm. So. Sad, but I true. Pref- exactly. But so I prefer these smaller rounds myself, the 10th ounce, because they do say pure silver on it, you know, whatever you say. Right, and you know what the weight is, whereas you have to exactly. get a calculator out and exactly. figure out how much silver is in a dime. And, and I also figure if there is a dollar, or excuse me, when there's a dollar collapse, that people will still consider, oh, these are dollars. They're not worth anything. You know, they're still U.S. dollars. Uh, they've lost value, and not everyone will realize or know, okay, this actually has silver content in it, which will take some time to... Well, and we really already have had a few dollar collapses. Uh, yeah. 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, mm-hmm. the U.S. dollar collapsed. It's a different dollar yep. now than what that was before. Yeah, so. and, and back in 33 as and, well. And that's why gold and silver shot up so quickly within the next mm-hmm. nine years. From $35 to $800. To mm-hmm. And silver from 3 three and a half dollars to fifty dollars yeah and it was just this is the real value of this and it kind of showed how much the dollar depreciated yeah absolutely. and, and so that's that, i think that's true you know what you're saying is that we're not seeing the price truly the price of gold and silver go up we're seeing the true value of the dollar manifest exactly. itself that's what it is that's more rather than saying okay this one ounce of silver is worth you know right now about 17 something u.s and, dollars and jp morgan said you know at one time gold is money <coughs> Everything else is debt. Yep. So and the, that's the, what money money is. It, it holds its value. Yep. The banks believe it. The governments believe it. But they're telling you otherwise. Yep. Yeah. Well, and even now, if you go to the bank, you're not getting a deposit slip anymore. You're getting a transaction receipt. That's right. Right? And the transaction receipt, if you look at the fine print, uh, most banks have it s- stated there that you're now issuing shares. Right. So that, you own a That's a an share. unsecured deposit yeah. at the bank. I'm like, whoa, what happened to the money? Yeah. You know, we're actually coming up on a break here. Um, but, man, I, I love this conversation because it's, to me, I'm learning a lot. And, and if you want to join in the conversation, we're going to be heading into this break here in a second. But join in. Be part of the uh, conversation. Be part of the show. But check us out. We're KTOK, KTKK, on Twitter, on Facebook, KTOK. And you can call in at 801-254-5855 when you come back from the break. We'll be right back with you. Oh, again, don't forget, check out survival-medical.com. Go to the gun show this weekend. Get all of your stuff today. Don't wait for shipping. Get it this Saturday and Sunday at Southtown Expo Center. They're our sponsor for this hour. Again, survival-medical.com. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to K Talk Radio. This is PrepperCon Radio on the coolest station in the mountains, broadcast to the world. K Talk AM 630. Hey, this is Scott. We've got Shane here, as usual, the Good prepared morning. guy. And I just want to say another special shout out. We are we're sponsored this uh, man the next 26 weeks. We're so lucky. This is so cool. John, the owner of at Survival Medical, is probably one of the coolest guys. But Survival Medical is the only first aid kit designed for long term storage. These guys have. 
figured it out. They're totally changing the game. Everything else expires within about two years. So watch your stuff. Get this instead. So find out more at survival-medical.com. So it's survival-medical.com. Uh, check them out this weekend at the gun show. At the, at, I think it's at Southtown yeah. Expo Center. Yep. I don't I, I think. I know. Crossroads I know it's at the West. Yeah. Crossroads of the West at Southtown Expo Center. You know, the price of admission is worth it because you're going to be saving so much money on your medical gear. These guys always sell lower than Whole, yeah, wholesale. Their like distributor they're costs and, yeah. and wholesale, it's crazy. It's awesome. So check it out. Um, we're talking real money today. And Shane's all giddy again already. So if you want to join in the conversation, if you have questions, um, Kelly here is the man. He knows what's going on in the industry. Why? Because he's been doing it forever. He told us or at least he's I can give you answers that are just as good as what anybody else is saying. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing this a long time. He knows what's going on. Um, so we're, we're lucky to have him in studio. So feel free to join the conversation at 801-254-5855. Um, so why, let's talk about why is, why is this even important to talk about money? Yeah, why, is, why do preppers uh, like gold and silver? I mean, what's well, so important about You have about to look at what, what is money. And, you know, I have a $20 gold piece here that at one time you could walk into a bank with a $20 bill and they would give that to That's you. That's right. Uh, now, if you went to somebody and said, hey, you know, would you rather have this $20 gold piece or a $100 bill, they'd take the $20 gold piece. You know, well, if they know what they it is. just know. Well, they just know. There's just something about gold. You gold just know it's valuable. Not it necessarily silver, but gold. And I think yeah. that's where you're kind of leaning. Is you know, like you say, you're a bit more of a gold guy than yeah. like me, a silver guy. Yeah, and and it's just uh, you know, and I like both. They they work in tandem. You know, but um, you know, the banks now, the central banks in the world are starting. At one time, Canada, in their in their central bank, they own 77 ounces of gold. That's it. By law, they can ha- they have to have less than a hundred ounces. So they got rid of all of their gold just users. recently. Yeah. Well, it was in probably the last ten years they well, did that. Even Canada, I guess Canada just recently sold off. They only had, I don't know how many tons. Well, they gold. had all these old nineteen twelve to nineteen fourteen okay. five and they dollar, just, ten dollar gold pieces and in they there sold forever. Them off. They sold about ten percent of them and melted the rest down. That's crazy. So, so why why are they not allowed to have more? Because like uh, they they are believing that it's just not valuable anymore. Um, and that'll come back. They're, they're basing all of their wealth of their country on the U.S. dollar. Mm. So they have faith in the U.S. dollar. Uh, but the U.S. Me. still has, you know, it'll, we can go on for hours about whether there's gold in Fort Knox. Yeah. At one time I didn't think there was. I, I think there is. But they don't want to give it any value. That's why they don't audit it. But um, So all of these banks are, are buying that. China doesn't allow an ounce of gold out unless it's yeah. in a – in a panda that they're making right. some extra money off of. And so they're storing it up. And I think what they're trying to do is once they get enough gold that they can back their currency, they're going to dump all these U.S. treasuries that they have. Yeah. And, yeah, they're going to take a hit. But the damage they'll do to the United States, you know, take your dollar and uh, it'll be worth a quarter. But aren't we like the largest consumer of their goods? I mean, how, how damaging oh, yeah, would that easily. be? And, and the, yeah, US, the U.S. government's largest export is debt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is our largest export. So, yeah. yeah uh, and some people tight. say, like Scott's saying, is, is if, okay, if the Chinese did dump all of their U.S. treasuries, that it would hurt, I mean, obviously it would hurt us tremendously, but it would also hurt them as well because they sell so much, uh, I'm going to say this, crap to us. They do. And that their market economy would crash. I've heard arguments either way, both ways. And maybe we're getting a little bit off, off the subject here, but uh, what's your take on, on what – because I think China is really the key. They are stockpiling. We know that. We don't know exactly how much. Some people think as much as 40,000 tons, which is a lot. And some think maybe – Probably. But it, no less than five or 6,000 Probably getting thousand close tons. to what we have. Yeah, probably about six – thousand tons the u.s has what 8100 uh the new york uh federal reserve has 6100 and some 6350 so I think. they say yeah. but most of that belongs to other countries mm-hmm. germany wanted their gold they back, back and they couldn't even get it back we couldn't even give them five percent of their gold back yeah. and then when they got it it wasn't the same bars that they brought here yeah. so why do why do us preppers why do we need to have precious metals gold well and you know it's great to have some kind of currency that's recognized by someone you know, the amount of dollar bills out there, I, th- I think they said 
I just saw a thing about that, that the, if you went to all the banks in the U.S. and everybody wanted to cash out their accounts, mm-hmm. they only have six cents of physical currency per one hundred per one hundred dollars yeah. that's deposited. So we actually so who's got to have some money? Last exactly. w- or two weeks ago, we had PrepperCon, right? The L- largest preparedness expo in the nation. Tons of fun. Over thirteen thousand people there. The craziest thing was we had to give the bank two weeks notice to pull out five thousand dollars in ones mm-hmm. and fives. Two weeks. Two weeks notice so they could get enough cash on hand. That's crazy. For us to and that money was for our tills. So yeah. when people mm-hmm. came in and bought tickets, we'd be able to give them change. Mm-hmm. And I, I was flabbergasted. I'm like, okay, these banks are federally mm-hmm. you know, insured, bull crap, garbage. Yep. They they have our money and they use it. Bull crap garbage, you know. It's it's just uh to me it's what do they what do you call those? Those uh Oh, those games where they hide the, oh, the shell games. Shell games. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like, I can't even think of it. Yeah, it's like a shell game with your own money. I'm like, why are they doing this to us? Well, yeah, they don't. They don't have the the currency. People, they don't need to have it. You know, it's all lent out to everybody else. You know, I mean, watch a It's a Wonderful Life and find out what happens yeah. to the Baileys. You no, know? that's one thing I always think of. Is is yeah, exactly that scene. Yeah. And when it's uh, everyone wants their cash. No, oh, no, your and, money and is everything you're, is you're going in digital your house. now. So what happens if the power would have gone out at PrepperCon? How many sales would have been made at PrepperCon if the power had gone out? Oh, we were fine. Oh, really? You would. We well, you fine. had but generators the weren't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, yeah. think of, think about that though. That they would not be able to do any transactions because yeah. your vent, your debit card or your credit card wouldn't go through. Exactly. So that's a problem. You know, what's funny is a lot of the vendors were doing the same thing. They're they're ready. I, I saw in many booths people had backup power of their own. They weren't using the power from the facilities. They were using their own battery banks, mm-hmm. um, which I think is awesome. You save a ton of money that way. See, and in Sweden, they're actually they're trying to ban currency. Yeah. Uh, there, are, you can go to a store and they'll say, "Sorry, we don't take currency. We'll, we take a card." And the governments that's love crazy. that because they can control the flow of money and what you're spending your money on. And they could say, no, you can't spend it on this. Or, hey, you've got a uh, parking ticket you need to pay. We've frozen your funds in your bank account. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we control. know that's the way it's going. Yeah, It has to go that way in order yeah. to get, again, more more negative interest rates mm-hmm. to then provide more control. So, I mean, that's a whole other topic for another day. But So the reason we as preppers should have... Uh, some precious metals. You saying we as preppers? It's everybody. Everyone should be a prepper, but we as exactly. We and I guess that's people. really what I mean. If is even we if the even five yeah, right. percent of people wanted some silver, yeah, couldn't they, get it. There wouldn't be enough for everybody. What what are, what are this the the statistics? How many? What percentage of of Americans have any precious metals that that I mean, they what, know of? Or well, other than say <laughs> your other jewelry, than your wing, yeah, other than jewelry, like oh, actual having silver, maybe silver a percent coins, maybe one percent, maybe. So if that demand doubled. Yeah, it would it would just incredibly you know we'd be we'd be toast mess things up. So, what would happen to the value of precious metals if that well when that happened? That's gonna I mean it's increase the value. I mean as soon as everybody it's funny with us you know we always say business is great when the price is going down or the price is going up. Mm-hmm. When it's That's level, true. you know nothing. But no, the, uh, it just needs to move. No, you're absolutely right. And it's right. funny that people always want to buy it when it starts going up. Yep. No, you need to buy it when it's going down. And in, the, in all reality, in all truth, you need to buy it when it's going up and when it's going down. And if you can buy it, buy it. Yeah, and, and if it's gone up way too much too fast, then that's called a bubble. Mm-hmm. And that's when you stay out. You know, It's amazing how many people in this last run in 2011, it went to $52 an ounce. Mm-hmm. We had customers that actually their only purchase ever was when it hit like $51. It hit wow. and, yeah. and now they haven't bought since. Well, yeah, because they bought it at the top. But don't get rid of it. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. We actually have a caller. Let's see if we can get him on the line. Hey, Dennis, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. So you have a question for us. Yeah, I was wondering about silver certificates. Um, you might get a $1 silver certificate. Are they worth anything? I mean, other than just a dollar? Or? They're, um, I mean, if it's uncirculated, you're going to have a little collector value. Uh, they're worth maybe a dollar and a quarter. Uh, nothing more than that. They can't be exchanged for silver. I, I did know a guy that when they announced that they were going to stop redemption of them, he went out to all the banks and everything he could find and bought as many as he could get, mm-hmm. and he swapped them for silver. He had to go to San Francisco to the Treasury, to the uh, Federal Reserve there, 
but he had something like twenty thousand dollars in face value of silver certificates. He said, and he swapped them for silver. Mm-hmm. Well, then you know, ten years later or so, he you know silver got up to thirty. I think he said he sold out at thirty five dollars an ounce. So he took his twenty thousand dollars and he turned it into. Oh, what, what would that be? It was like a quarter of a million dollars. Nice. Yeah. So, but right now they're just they're just they're fun to spend it. I use them for um, uh, tips in a restaurant. Oh yeah. They're a lot of fun. People see that and it kind of makes their day. Like, they think they're this? rich for a minute. Yeah. Go up to the bank teller and say, "I would like to cash my check. I would like Federal Reserve notes." And they're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, I want this is redeemable in, in in money. It says so. I want money for this. That's and, right. Well, right at the bottom of this of this one of these silver certificates that I have, it says it says one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was until uh, 1968, I think, is when they stopped that. Silver. Okay. So, so even though it's a deal printed by the United States of America, they can back out of their promises. Well, right? it's still good for a dollar, and that's oh, the promise. Okay. That's the it, promise. It still might be worth a dollar. <laughs> yeah, it's still worth a dollar. So you just, just okay. can't exchange yeah, it for silver. It's funny. I see people that have like a nineteen thirty four hundred dollar bill. And, you know, we've had this in the family forever. What's it worth? And I say, oh, it's worth $100. <laughs> worth $100. And yeah. In 1934, $100 was a lot, a lot of money. And if they would have exchanged that for gold or silver at the time. Yeah, if they, if they had actually had, a, a you know, five $20 gold pieces and then kept those, then you'd have something. But, Yeah. That shows you how much well, the dollar has thought. to That's what down. I've been told, and I just wanted to hear it from somebody else again. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I know people have skepticism about coin dealers sometimes saying, oh, they just want to get this from me for nothing. That's a great point. That's just one of those. Hey, thanks for calling in. Thanks. Uh, bye-bye. Yeah, that, that brings up another topic we'll touch on real quick is that uh, numismatics. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my advice is stay away from num- numismatics. You okay. don't want to pay a premium on that. Explain. You keep using terms. That <sighs> most people don't <laughs> hear every day. Okay. And you just pass by it like, oh, yeah. It's it's a, this is a numismatic is a collectible is. coin, right? Right. It has value because of because it's something collectible. about it. Right. Thank you. And so when it comes down to actual silver or gold content in that coin, it's just like any other round or Yeah, or I coin. wouldn't be out buying rare art if I didn't know anything about rare art. So if... With numismatic coins, if you don't know anything about it, stay away from it because somebody would love to, to mm-hmm. make some money off of you doing that. Uh, it can be profitable. I tell people at a coin show that probably only 5% of the coins at a coin show will actually increase in value. The rest of them are – I have things that are fun to collect because of the history mm-hmm. involved. Right. But I'm not thinking I'm going to get rich on it. If you're going to collect it for a personal reason, right. because you like the coin, you like it has some some uh, the value you get value from it is the knowledge and the enjoyment you get out of it. So Just like about, a car. What about like s- silver rounds? You know, you've got the maple leaf, you've got the eagle. You know, does it matter? Like when you're just looking at rounds as opposed to the, just actu- the actual currency Good ones. Question. Well, I like. I like maple leaves more than eagles because um, they actually are four nines pure. Mm-hmm. Oh. Eagles. If you look at an eagle, nowhere on it does it say it has the purity of the silver. Mm-hmm. The government was stupid. They have to have 0.3%, I think it's 0.03 or 0.3% copper in them. So it's really hard for them to have the blanks made for that. So they actually put copper because they thought it makes it harder. Mm-hmm. Well, not that much. It, you know, you had to put a lot more than that into it. So they have a lower fineness and you pay a bigger premium for them. Interesting. And that's the thing too, you know, the premium you pay up front on a lot of things, you'll get it back at the end. Um, mm-hmm. But to say one's better than another is not true. Okay. It's really just But your, if you can buy pure you. silver for less money, that makes sense. common sense says that's the thing to buy. Yeah, no, that's true. That's good to know because that's what I've been doing is trying to buy the most for the least. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, mean, I guess I've that's the difference. I've got Eagles. I've got you know, the Maple Leafs. I've got – We have people uh, that want scratched up – maple leaves mm-hmm. they call them scruffies or impaired okay. because you're they're buying the gold they don't care about how nice it is right they know they're going to pay a lower price when they get it and they know they're going to get less for it when they sell it but that spread but it's the content they can get more gold for the same amount right, of right yeah and so i guess that's the difference between a coin and a round a round is something you can stamp yourself right. you can't stamp a coin that's right. a gov- that's, that's a government a gov- minted yeah. coin. It has a denomination. Well, and like with, I tell people, right? like you know, they have what they call a monster box. Mm-hmm. That's five hundred ounces of silver. 
Um, so a monster box of Eagles, 500 ounces, for the same amount of money that costs, you can get about 580 ounces of our silver. Mm, yeah. So you're getting 80 extra ounces of silver. You wow. Know? And it's a game of ounces. So like a walking Liberty? We, we, do we do, do a lot of different designs. Walking Liberty and the Morgan, the Buffalo and cool. Indian, like on the nickel. So the Walking Liberty looks like the American Eagle. It does. Uh-huh. Uh, although it doesn't have a denomination stamped on it. It's not quite as detailed as the American Eagle. Well, the detail, they've lost some detail on the Eagle. Have they? They've gone to a lower relief because it's easier to strike. Okay. Yeah, ours looks more like the half dollars that were struck in 1916 to 1947. So, okay. But okay. other than that, I mean, but our silver is actually pure than the silver in a silver eagle. Really? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So, just slightly though, right? I mean, it's oh yeah, point nine nine. No, they both have an ounce. Of, well, ours actually has more than an ounce of silver, but yeah, it's very it. slight. And, okay. and and yeah, and our silver isn't quite up to the eagle to the maple leaf standard. So we're right, right in between there, and they're they're close. Anything point nine 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 is considered pure. And you can tell the difference just by looking at it. The, the eagles definitely they shine a lot better. Well, we're we're talking gold, silver. We're talking real money, and uh, today's show is actually sponsored by Survival Medical, the only first aid kit designed for long term storage. Check them out at survival medical.com. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to PrepperCon Radio on K Talk AM six thirty, the coolest station in the world, in my opinion. Oh yeah, what is that one? We're talking uh, PrepperCon Radio right now. We <laughs> during the break. We start talking about TV shows we like, dislike, and uh, I mentioned Alone, which is actually on right now, uh, I think every Thursday night, but it, it's awesome because people are taken and they drop 10 contestants off all over the place and they've got to survive. Wilderness survival experts. This one guy from Arizona tapped out first day, he didn't even spend the night. I'm like, whoa, and he was How talking to me the, the whole time, like, well, goodbye. And then another show um, Kelly brought up that his wife likes to watch. He's <laughs> he's like some fat guys in the in, in the, the woods. forest. It's, it's actually fat guys in the woods. Oh, that's what the fat with, guys uh, in the woods. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> with Creek Stewart, and he actually I remember when he got famous was when I was a Boy Scout. Um, he, in American Life, the Boy Scout publication, he was in the back of that with these little, you know, survival guides that he would sell, and he was like four years older than me. I just remember seeing those. I'm like, man, that's so cool. And my mom would never let me buy one because we we're penny pinching back then still still should be um but i spent too much money on food anyway so it doesn't really matter my food storage is my gut first that's right this is my 72 hour kit right here i got like i I got a week and a half supply but i mean there's so many fun things you can get involved in that that actually do teach you quite a bit these two shows you actually learn quite a bit unlike some of the other shows you don't learn anything from um but we have fun PrepperCon Radio, our whole focus is to help make sure you're learning something, that you're engaged, that you have a say. Um, We're talking real money today, precious metals, um, currency, what actually counts. And we're shifting gears right now. I want to talk a little bit about what ifs, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's not really what ifs, it's what when is what it should be. And I was reading a few weeks ago, right after PrepperCon, one of my buddies posted this article about China... (coughs) changing their currency and that their, their new gold stamp is not going to be transferable to the U.S. dollar at all. They're not going to accept that. You know, that's kind of scary. You know, what happens when when or if that actually takes place? Another, another thing that came up was uh, there's this video. <coughs> Everyone that was in real estate in 2006 remembers the big bubble and then the giant tanking crash that destroyed so many people's lives. Um, and that was all... I mean, that was, that was scary. I lost a house during that time. I know a lot of people lost a home. Um, I lost a house because I, I switched jobs and had to move, and I couldn't rent out my house. I couldn't sell, sell my house fast enough, and it went from a $300,000 home down to a $112,000 home really fast. I was living in Arizona at the time. Really scary. And one of the guys that, that actually predicted that was Peter Schiff. Mm-hmm. He just came out with another video saying that in May there's going to be another collapse. The dollar will mm-hmm. collapse this time. It's not a housing market bubble that's crashing. It's the dollar's going to collapse. You never know. I mean, everyone comes out with predictions, um, and that's one of the first things I say is that every prediction you hear, take with a grain of salt. I hear a lot of predictions that there's an earthquake coming to Utah mm-hmm. in July yep. and that we're all doomed, and I'm like, 
Those are the two. Yeah, it sounds like September of last year. Really, kind of the two or three biggest topics I'm here right now is okay. Yeah, earthquakes in Utah, uh, and a, a high increase, a big increase in the in the possibility of having big earthquakes. Uh, second is what's going on with with silver right now and precious metals. It's uh, the uh, big banks are admitting to collusion. They're admitting to uh, manipulation, mm-hmm. and so they're starting to lose control. Uh, and then, uh, like, like uh, I'm a big fan of, fan of Peter Schiff. I listen to him all the time. I've, I've met him in person. I've got his books and autographs and so forth. So I'm a bit of a geek on Peter Schiff. But uh, I don't know that I'm. I'm definitely uh, very. Of course, concerned, but uh, if anyone throws out a date, I'm very skeptical yeah. you know, on any kind of a date whatsoever. I mean, it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen, and I, I feel you know that a collapse. There's too many people that can pull levers and yeah, push things exactly. out. Yeah. So. Exactly. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm what you'd call a non-subscriber but a participant. Mm-hmm. Like I'll listen and I'll watch, but I don't subscribe to the dates. I don't subscribe to that. We actually have a Perfect. caller, Kathy. Let me see if I can bring her on the line. Kathy, are you there? I am here. All right. I heard you've got a comment for us. I do. So my father works in the, he works for the banks. He has been in real estate for years and they're gearing up. So what he does is he goes out and he will evaluate properties that the bank has repossessed and evaluate what needs to be done so that they can sell it for as, as quickly as they can for as mm-hmm. much as they can. And he also works with the foreclosures for the banks. And he said that uh, they're gearing up for another one of those collapses. Yeah. You know, the 2008, they're getting ready for another one of those. That doesn't surprise me at all. How long has he been talking about this? Well, um, he was in town and was telling me about that probably about two months ago. Wow. Yeah, one thing that I've heard from Peter Schiff and others as well is that the new housing starts over the past two months have dropped seven percent, I think, in March and or, or in February and eight percent in March. So we know, we know that uh, nationwide the housing market is on a downturn. Well, I just saw that this is the first time since they recorded it that there have been thirteen straight straight weeks of more stocks being sold than bought uh, by the bigger banks. Mm-hmm. So that's telling you they know what's people in the industry know what's going on. Yeah. You know, the government comes out with these numbers about unemployment telling us it's below 5%. No, so it's you're probably it. more like 12%, you know, if you want to count it the real way. And it could be higher if yeah. you're going to conclude some other things. But, you know, the, the you know we try not to scare people with this, but yeah. just to give them options. Because being prepared, there's, there's several ways to be prepared. There's the short term and there's the long term. And, you know, I, I actually have put all of – I mean, my I put my money where my mouth is. Uh, I actually have taken all of my 401ks and IRAs and converted them into precious metals because uh, – That like you my, hold yourself. I did, yeah, and I hold it myself, and there's a way to do that, um, and it's legal and everything, and it's still an IRA. But uh, Mike Maloney, who I'm a geek and follower yeah, of, you know, he pulled everything out after he – he pulled it out just to kind of look in cash to see what was going on. And he says, you know, I don't love gold and silver, but I love them right now because nothing else – Everything else is overvalued. Yeah. And so he's just waiting on the sidelines with that. And he says, I'm not going to leave it in paper currency because that could be wiped out. I mean, people don't realize that, you know, there won't be any more bank bailouts. There are going to be bank bail-ins. Bail-ins yeah. and, and that's in Dodd-Frank. There's going to be, if you've got money in the bank, there's going to be a haircut in Greece. And, and, and Crete was just to show you, Cyprus, mm-hmm. hey, th- let's see what the people will do if we do that. You know, how big yeah, of a really uprising? Not Absolutely. too bad. <laughs> Not bad enough. We got another caller. Let's take this one. Hey, you're on K Talk. What's your name? Phil. Uh, what I'm just calling to get the name of that metal company that was on low earlier. Oh, they're actually still here. Oh, it's, oh. Uh, it's quality. <laughs> it's qualitysilverbullion.com is the website. Qualitysilverbullion.com. Uh-huh, all one word. Down in Utah County. Yep, we're in Utah County. We actually do mint the items, and and it's kind of a kind of order it and we'll set up an appointment for you to come in. We don't like people just walking in off the street because no. it's not secure for us and it's not secure for you, you know. Yeah, How would no, you I feel would just... going in and having somebody sitting in the parking lot watching you and mm-hmm. writing you on your license plate number? 
Oh, I and saying, him. "Hey, where was this guy going? Yeah. What? Did you, how, how big is that box?" And things. So we we I we're really crackers. concerned about security. Yeah. Uh, so you'll ship though. Yeah, we ship. Um, okay. We actually do an item too where. Uh, I don't know if Jim will like me to say this, but if you're a veteran, uh, we're very concerned about veterans. We do have free shipping for veterans. And then depending on the amount, the value will will ship for free. Some people like to come and pick it up themselves. Uh, just for another added security, I, w- I like, I have a P.O. box. I use a P.O. box for everything. And if they say, well, I need a physical address, I give them the physical address of the post office. And my box number is like an apartment number. So mm-hmm. that, that works, works really well, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, thanks for cool. calling. Thank yeah, thanks for calling in. All right, we got a lot of calls coming in. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. Hi, are you taking any calls from the public? Well, that's what we're doing right now. You're on. Okay, great. Uh, would it be too far afield to talk about the Benghazi and Hillary Clinton? Uh, right now, we're still focusing on uh, gold and silver and, and commodities, precious metals, IRAs. precious metals. Yeah. I know. Well, I was going to say during that they supposedly they stole 143 tons of gold yep. and 143 tons of silver. Same in Ukraine supposedly. and wherever the U.S. government goes. Same in Syria and yeah, they do that when things get bad and it starts to people start questioning the value of the dollar. That's when gold and everything starts going up. So pe- governments will dump metals just so that it keeps them the the value down so that the dollar doesn't fall too much. Exactly. They need to have more metals to deliver in order to prop up mm-hmm. or prop up the market to keep the prices down. Yeah. In the 70s, the Saudi, Saudi government went out and uh, they dumped like 10 million ounces of silver on the market really quickly. And uh, just to depress the – what they were going to do is depress the price, and then they were going to go back in and buy it cheaper mm-hmm. and make a profit on it. Well, now you're talking physical silver, physical not, silver paper, yeah. not paper silver. So they were going to make a, you know, a few you know, hundred million dollars really quick. The British government kind of knew what was going on, so the government bought all that silver mm-hmm. to keep it off the market. So uh, <laughs> they, they kind of stopped them from doing that again. But governments play with these metals all the time just to not make things look as bad as they really are. That's a crazy yeah. way to put it. Hey, thanks for your call. Hey, thanks for calling K-Talk. You're on the air. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Hey, I have... Uh I've also converted, I years ago converted all my 401ks into precious metal IRAs, which, uh, you know, I pay storage fees on, and they're in some uh, magical vault in New York or somewhere. And I've heard recently about uh, taking possession of uh, your gold and your precious metal IRA, and I would be interested in that. Can you give me some direction there? Yeah, if you want to call. Or, or send me an email, okay. uh, Kelly at QualitySilverBullion.com. I can tell you about that. Um, one of the things, David Morgan, he's another, mm-hmm. he's a yep. big silver guy, and he doesn't even, he deals in mines and stuff, and he just says, mm-hmm. you know, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I don't yeah. want to have to worry about needing to get my silver and worrying about it being in Delaware somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I've yeah. had too many horror stories of people that have bought you know, monster boxes of silver eagles, and then 25 years later, because they don't even get to see what they bought. It goes directly from the coin dealer to the depository. Yeah. And they'll mm-hmm. get the box back, and they'll open it up, and there's steel bars inside of it. And it's been so long, and they can't tell for sure if it's their box because it's not sequestered. So they're stuck yeah. with the box of steel. So and there are quality uh, dealers out there who have been around for a long time with a great reputation. So we could definitely give you some uh, in addition yeah, to I mean, quality silver bullion. There's, there's local places here, you know, um, okay. uh, that you can s- store metals at. Um, so there's to put top, if you want it in a depository like that, you know, Salt Lake. There's one here. So okay, uh, but and if you want to have it, you know, if you've got a safe or somewhere, a nice place in your backyard that you really yeah. like. Yeah. You can do that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm concerned that uh, you, you know you mentioned the the bail in, and I'm like, you know, yeah. I can see them, I can see the grabberment going. Well, you know, you've got X amount, and now we need some of that. Well, so. have you noticed that they're called yeah. individual retirement accounts? Yeah. Uh, oh, when yeah. the individual, it's 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 written into law. I think it was six years ago, and they've come to Congress like twice to vote on it. They can go in when you die. 
you don't need your IRA anymore. That becomes possession of the government, and they will give your family Social Security. But that individual no longer exists. And the other thing that they can go in and do is you've got stocks in an IRA. They could say, well, you know what? We're going to give you U.S. Treasury bonds for 25% of your stock. Yeah. Uh, they're equal. They're they're the same. You know, this is worth just as much as that. <laughs> well, it's, they're running out of money. This is the first year that the Social Security uh, is actually going to be paying out the same amount of money as it takes in. Yeah. So everything after this year is a debt for Social Security. Wow. So Scary. now let me let me make sure I got this straight. That's Kelly at QualitySilverBullion.com. Right. Uh -huh. K E L L Y. K E L L Y. Uh -huh. oh, got it. All right. Awesome. I'll Thanks shoot you an call. email today. Yep. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thanks for Bye. your call. You know, we're, we're grateful for all our listeners. We missed a few calls during that time, but uh, we took as many as we could. You know, we're uh, running to the end of the show right now. But if you're in the sound of our voice and if you're listening in, um, if you have friends that, you know, don't listen to our show and you think this information could be very beneficial for them, please get them to our podcast. Uh, it's streamed from k-talk.com. This hour has been sponsored by Survival Medical. They are the only first aid survival uh, kit designed for long-term storage. So check them out, survival-medical.com. And remember, tune in next week. We'll be back every Wednesday from 9 to 10 here on K-Talk AM 630. Thanks for coming so much, Kelly. It was awesome. It was Thanks great. for being here, Kelly. Thank you.
One, two, three. We all need a safe place to retreat to sometimes. Whether you're planning to bug out for the apocalypse or want a quiet place to relax and get away to, utahsafehaven.com is your solution. Founded by preppers for preppers. They have the best properties for sale, ranging from small campsites to 50 acres or more. Pricing starts at just $19.9. And the best thing, everyone qualifies for their special in-house financing and no credit checks. Call Utah Safe Haven today at 435-315-8346 or email info at utahsafehaven.com and discover how quickly you can find your safe haven. That's 435-315-8346.